Do you understand that in Christianity, the relationship between the Father and Jesus is the pattern for the kind of relationship you and I are to have with Jesus? If you could ever find out what kind of intimacy, what kind of oneness, what kind of flow that Jesus had with his Father, you would know automatically, friend, what kind of intimacy and flow and life you're going to experience 24 hours a day in Jesus. Jesus was all wrapped up in and mastered by. He had this obsession, this driving passion. He was just bugged with the Father's will. His whole life, all his energy, everything he did, where he went, what he said, every attitude, all flowed in one direction, the Father's will. He was obsessed. He says, as I'm mastered by and all wrapped up in and obsessed with the Father and His will, guess what? You're going to be all wrapped up in and mastered by Jesus and His will as my whole heart beats for the Father. So your whole heart is going to beat for me as I've got one driving passion, one determining factor, one high priority in my life, Jesus says. So you're going to have one driving passion, one high priority in your life. It's going to be Jesus and His will. Jesus is going to be your life. He's going to be your love. He's going to be your turn on. He's going to be your obsession. He's going to be the talk of your lips. You're going to think about Him 24 hours a day. He's going to be intimately involved in the, everything you do. He's going to determine your evenings. He's going to determine when you get up, when you go to bed. He's going to determine where you go. He's going to determine your attitudes. He's going to be, de be determining your business. He's going to de be determining business deals. He's going to have you. He's going to determine how you conduct yourself at the school. Your whole life is going to revolve around and be mastered by Jesus. You're going to be obsessed with Christ. Preacher, there are some other things beside religion, you know. I mean, religion is nice, and Christianity is fine, and Jesus has his place, and certainly we want to keep the church open on Sunday, and I mean, religion is really okay, and it's fine to pray before your meals, and we certainly want to be saved and go to heaven, and, but there are other things in religion. You're right, you're right, you're right. But I'm sorry, friend, we can't call you a Christian. Because I have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus is Lord of all, or he isn't Lord at all. I've, I've come to believe, folks, that he's either your high priority, or he's not even in the list. I've come to find out, folks, he'll be your turn on, or he won't be. I've come to find out, folks, he'll be your obsession, or he won't be there. I've come to find out, folks, he'll be your love and your loyalty, your number one, your beating heart passion, or he won't be around. I've discovered it's all out for Jesus. My dad taught me well. He said, it doesn't take much of a man to be a Christian, just takes all there is of him. <laughs> But I'll tell you one thing, it's going to take all your time and all your energy and all your money and you're going to have to have your whole life revolving around and dictated to by. You're going to have to be obsessed and turned on with. He will be Lord of all. Or just don't count on going when he comes. Now you see, we're not talking about super Christian over against lesser Christian. We're not talking about super saint over against lesser saint. We're talking about the bare minimum of getting in. You know, around here, we don't talk about lukewarm Christians, kind of Christians. Maybe Christians hope they're Christians. We don't talk about that at all before, because, folks, there isn't such a thing as a lukewarm Christian. They don't exist. That's like talking about dry water. There's no such thing as half Christian. You're either all out for Jesus. Well, preacher, I'm trying to be. Do you go up to an elephant, whack him on the trunk and say, are you an elephant? Well, he says, I'm trying to be. You don't try to be an elephant. You either are or you aren't. And there's only one standard for Christianity, folks. And that is all out for Jesus. I want to ask you, friend. When are you going to go all out for Jesus? When's he going to become your love? When's he going to be your turn on? When's he going to become your delight? Well, what does he demand out of you? All out for Jesus. Number one, turn on obsession, passion, burning from the heart. Can I ask you, friend, when are you going to pull out all the stops and just begin to burn for Jesus? When's he going to be your love? When is he going to be your delight? When is he going to be the excitement of your being? When is he just going to be your living experience? When are you going to go all out for Christ?
You know whether Jesus is your love. You know whether he's your turn on. You know whether he's your excitement. You know whether he's your life. You know whether he's a hobby that you have. You know whether he's the God you come to on Sunday morning and tip your hat to the God to check in down at the church house. You know, friend, whether he's an overcoat that you put on in the winter and take off in the summer. You know whether he's your life. And I'm trying to tell you, friend, you're damned until he's your life. You're not going to make it. There aren't degrees in Christianity. It's either all out for Jesus or it isn't. The issue's not good and bad. Everybody here is good. The issue is, he's not been all.